talking about the things that matter most to you, Catholic Women Now. Well, welcome to Catholic Women Now. I'm Julie Nelson. I'm delighted to be with you, and I'm just more delighted that you have invited me into your home today, your car, wherever you are at. Uh, if you are listening via the app, thank you, and you can always catch catch our podcasts via the app any time of any of the day. So today I'm excited. Um, Emily Schmidt is joining me again today. She's filling in for Chris, who is on sabbatical. And today we're going to be talking about Immerse Ministry. It's a new ministry in Des Moines, and we'll talk a little bit about that. It's a spirit led ministry of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to talk a little, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about our own personal experiences of encountering the Holy Spirit and what led to this be, to be started and a little bit about the evening of Immerse that when we have our gatherings. So before we begin, I think it would be great if we could start with prayer. So Emily, are you with me? You can join us, start us in prayer. I am. I'm happy to start us in prayer. Let us um, entrust this half hour to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. As we pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Well, the Eucharistic Miracles of the World display can be viewed at Christ the King Parish on Des Moines' south side. May 3rd through May 24th, so you might want to check that out. And then we also have the Man Up uh, West Power Lunch tomorrow at noon at St. Francis of Assisi with Jesse Wheeler, the Director of Liturgical Institute, and he'll be there to talk about the two foundational principles of sacramental theology. Lunch will be provided. And something I wanted to, I came across this week on some of my social media feed is the USCCB, the U.S. United States Council of Catholic Bishops, has asked that we fast and pray tomorrow, Friday, May 13th, which is the feast day, the memorial day of Our Lady of Fatima. And they have um, these intentions, and in which I'm going to read here, of what to offer up for our fasting and prayer. One is for our nation for the integrity of our judicial system and all branches of government, for the conversion of hearts and minds of those who advocate for abortion, for the overturning of Roe versus Wade, for a new commitment to building America where children are welcomed, cherished, and cared for, and where mothers and fathers are encouraged and strengthened, and where marriage and the family are recognized and supported as the true foundations of a healthy and flourishing society. And last, our for our Blessed Mother's intercession and guidance as the Church continues to walk with mothers and families in need and continues to promote alternatives to abortion and seeks to create a culture of life. So let us uh, put this on our calendar tomorrow and join all together in fasting and praying. We know that fasting is a very powerful form of prayer, that uh, there are some things that cannot be rid of except through fasting. Jesus talks about that in Mark chapter 9. So I hope that you will join me in fasting tomorrow. I think we kind of gotten, I know I've gotten a little lax because of Easter and the octave of Easter. So this is a good opportunity to get back into this very holy uh, endeavor that we can do. Absolutely. I know I'll, I'm excited to fast that tomorrow and I agree with you. I've been a little lax through the Easter season, but this will be a good way to get back in that habit on fasting on Fridays. Exactly. Well, Emily, we're kind of excited to be together here to talk about a new ministry that we've been working on with a few other people. Yes. It's called Immerse. We hope that you've heard about it. Listeners, if you're not, well, we're going to tell you about it. Immerse is a uh, uh, ministry of the Holy Spirit. Um, our passion is to make God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit known and loved. And um, we're working... Our team is excited. We highlight our Catholic identity through prayer and worshiping and strengthening our relationship with Jesus while encountering the Holy Spirit with a renewal of the mind in Scripture. So, Emily, um, let's talk a little bit how Immerse uh, came to be with you and I. Yeah, yeah it was it was definitely Holy Spirit led, wasn't it? It certainly <laughs> was. I had to stop and think this morning when I first met you. I don't remember, to be honest. I was trying to think, when did we first meet? Was it through the well? It was through the well, which was an yeah. um, endeavor started by Lisa Schmidt here in Des Moines. And we were on a little like mini retreat of the well 
leadership team, and we found out that I found out that you had been doing some of the Holy Spirit ministry when you lived in Arizona, and I was just coming back into it. It had just been reintroduced into my life, and we kind of we just we just connected and we prayed with each other and we prayed with other women that that (laughs) night. It was very powerful. It was. And I think, you know, and at that point I'd been working, um, at St. I'd been working with a ministry at St. Pius where we did first Friday adoration. Um, and we were kind of looking to grow that and promote that. We were at a good place. We were discerning where God was calling us. Like, do we continue to, do the first Friday adoration? Do we stop? Is there somewhere else God's calling us to be? And Julie, just our conversation and our prayer together, we kind of provided that clear, God provided that clarity through our prayer that we were supposed to connect and come together um, through now what is immerse. And, and we went, that. and we attended a conference together through Encounter yeah. School and Ministries, which really fired us up. I mean, the Holy Spirit got a hold of us at that conference. And I remember on the way back in the car, we just talked nonstop of all these ideas and things were this outpouring of revelation that God was giving us. And uh, we decided that I, I kind of had on my heart to start something. You had already been doing something. And we decided, hey, let's do this together. You know, the Holy yeah. Spirit is the unifier, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I just, and I remember feeling really at peace with it and almost relieved because, you know, when you pray for something and you ask God, which way do you want me to go? Can you direct my heart, God? And when he just so affirms you, especially through another person and Julie and I, we often talk about, we have a prophetic friendship where (laughs) often, (laughs) often we're thinking that the other's thinking or someone, the other will do something that the other person will say, oh my gosh, I really needed to hear that. Or that is so on point with where I am right now. Um, and that was just a really affirming, that car trip was just a really affirming time for, for me at least. And it was for me too. And that just, that's just, you know, that's just a great, beautiful witness to the Holy spirit working in us, you know, and we're all, we all have the Holy spirit through our baptism, but I think we should just talk a little bit before, um, uh, a little bit about what the structures of the night, evenings are, because yeah. First Friday has a little di- different um, yeah. focus than they're all about the Holy Spirit, but then immerse, which or then Third Thursday. So maybe you can yeah. talk a little bit about First Friday. Absolutely. So First Friday, we actually started it at St. Pius in like 2014 as a response to the 5 p.m. mass that they started um, at that time. And it was a way we knew we wanted to incorporate contemporary praise and worship music. So First Friday was a way to introduce that to the parish outside of mass so that people got used to it. Um, And then it just really evolved into this adoration night where we have um, exposition, a scripture reading from the gospel uh, usually. And then we do praise and worship music through the night. And we also have a testimony, a witness from someone about explaining their encounter with Christ and how that really changed their life or their perspective of faith. And we, another goal of first Friday was we wanted something that people could bring people who maybe were outside of the faith to, because mass sometimes can be a uh, insider sport, but adoration and praise and worship is something that people of all faiths can be very comfortable with. So that's really the first Friday flow and kind of its background. Well, uh, we're, I'm talking with Emily. We're talking about Immerse Ministry here in Des Moines. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about the third Thursday and get into a little bit more about the Holy Spirit. This is Catholic Women Now, broadcasting from the Iowa Catholic Radio Network studio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by CTO. What great news for donors to the Catholic Tuition Organization. You now receive 75%, yes, 75% of your donation back in Iowa tax credits beginning January 1st of this year. Your support has helped thousands of students attend our Catholic schools. Best gift ever. Online, ctoiowa.org. At CTO, the bottom line, it's for the kids and their future. 
Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Mercy College of Health Sciences, where you can chart your course for more. Mercy College provides unparalleled clinical rotations, hands-on learning, accelerated education, and flexible schedules. Since 1899, Mercy College has been transforming students into healthcare professionals. Guided by Catholic values, our faculty put classroom theory into practice. Students are prepared for roles in service and leadership throughout their own careers. Learn more at mchs.edu. Mercy College of Health Sciences, mchs.edu. Honey, I'm so excited for our kitchen remodel. All right, you love birds, floors, natural hardwood. Okay. Wow, that was quick. Countertops. Definitely natural granite. Check. Woohoo! And that wall. Tear it down. It let in more natural sunlight. Done. Whoa. Speaking of tearing down walls, your family planning. Natural, right? Natural family planning is 99% effective at achieving or delaying pregnancy, and there are no harmful chemicals. So it's better for you and the environment. Tear down the wall. A message from Iowa Catholic Radio. Hello, this is Steve Ray. Join me in Iowa Catholic Radio on a journey of a lifetime with a Footprints of God pilgrimage to the Holy Land. November 11 through the 20th, 2023. We'll visit the places where our Lord performed miracles, including the Mount of Transfiguration, the Wedding Church in Cana, Tabga, where Jesus multiplied the loaves and fish, and of course, the Holy Sepulchre. The scriptures will come alive as I offer expert teaching along the way like I always do. Visit iowacatholicradio.com for all the details. Well, welcome back to Catholic Women Now. I'm Julie Nelson. I'm speaking with Emily Schmidt. We're talking about the Immerse ministry here in Des Moines. And right before the break, Emily talked about the, the first Friday. And I'm going to talk a little bit about Third Thursday. These are both come under the umbrella of Immerse. Third Thursday is just that. It meets the third Thursday. And we start with 630 Mass and then followed by a... Right now we're doing like a gospel reflection because... Um, I would have to say that faith is built upon hearing God's word. So building faith within our community and within those present. And then we have uh, some praise and worship, reconciliation is offered, and then we have prayer teams. And so if anybody wants to have some a little more clarity brought to them, I just want to hear what God has to has for them, we have prayer teams. And these prayer teams are like being trained through the Encounter School of Ministry and get uh, receiving um, um activation through that. So they're being, they have experiences, I guess my point in all that. So that's what we do on third Thursday, but it's exciting because we have been meeting at St. Francis, but the next week on May 19th, when we meet again for the third Thursday, we're going to be at Holy Trinity in Des Moines. So we're kind of taking it on the road, Emily. I'm excited. Uh, That's been a goal of ours from the beginning is to expand this ministry to reach more parishes in our Des Moines area. In fact, we met with Bishop Johnson just last fall, correct? Correct. And and we told him this plan and he was very supportive that we would, you know, take this to the greater Des Moines area so that other parishes could experience this type of prayer and especially the healing prayer teams. I think that's really powerful. Yeah. I mean, I've been on, I, I do that myself and it's very powerful. And I just wanted people to feel comfortable with this idea of getting prayer because it's new for some yeah. people. And we often just tell people just relax and receive. You're just to receive yeah. what, and, and to, what the, what the Holy Spirit wants to reveal. And it's, it's just hearing God's voice. It's seeing, it's God bringing out your the gold he has put in you and to know you're loved and to know that you're seen by God. And it's, it's that simple. It's that simple. And it's very powerful. And Emily, speaking of powerful personal, personal experiences, I think our listeners might be interested in hearing how we experienced this for the first time. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was, um, I mean, I was introduced to a relationship with the Holy Spirit when I moved to Phoenix, Arizona after college. And I, before that time, the Holy Spirit to me was more of just a mysterious entity. I I would say like the magician who just performed his magic tricks and did what God wanted him to do. And after going through some, a retreat and through study and prayer um, with a group of people in Arizona, I became to, to really more fully understand the Holy spirit as a, as the person, the third person of the Trinity, as an actual person that I'm called to have a relationship with. And my first experience was actually very, um, a little overwhelming. Yes, I, it I is was, overwhelming. It's so overwhelming. And I got, 
actually kind of scared. If I'm really honest, I um, was in a room full of people and they were speaking in tongues and prophesying. And I just didn't know what was going on. I'd never experienced anything like that before. And so I did, I started crying and I started calling out to mother Mary, just started praying hail Mary's all over the place and praise God. One of the retreat leaders that was with me, she noticed that I was having just overwhelming feelings. And she pulled me aside and just pulled me aside to one-on-one. We prayed individually. And through that prayer, I was able to find peace. And then after I, oh gosh, there's so much of the story. I just don't have time to tell everyone, but. Well, and I just think, <laughs> um, I think the kind of yeah. thing is, is there's a little bit of a processing that happens afterwards. Yes, absolutely. And, and, um, but what you experience is that great outpouring of love through the power of the Holy oh. Spirit. That's Paul talks about in Romans 5, 5. And uh, I think that's one of the beautiful things about Immerse is a lot of times people will have this powerful experience, maybe through a physical healing, which I know we have the third Wednesdays here down at the, you know, St. Ambrose. And so they experience this great, powerful experience. But we welcome you to come to Immerse and allow yourself to unpack that in an environment of praise and worship where the Holy Spirit is prevalent, where there's all these people praying together and asking the Holy Spirit to reveal himself and you'll get revelation. You'll, God will speak to you in that moment. And I think that's really um, one of the beautiful things about Immerse. And we've had feedback from people who have gone to third Wednesday and then come to third Thursday and say, this is what I needed just to sit and soak in the presence of the Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I like what you said, you know, we have a relationship with the God, the Father, Jesus, the Son. Well, the Holy Spirit's part of that Trinitarian model uh, relationship yeah. too. And so now we have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And I think that's one of the beautiful things. We've seen healings happen at um, Immerse. We've ha- a lot of mo- emotional and spiritual healing happens. And actually, that's how my, my whole journey began is I was a hot mess. I was just a hot mess. <laughs> and if you had seen me, you thought my life was together. And I went to, I got invited to a praise and worship night. And um, my friend just gently nudged me. She says, you need to go over here and have these people pray over you. And I sat down and the person looked at me and she said, well, what is it? It's on your heart. And I'm looking at this stranger. I'm saying, to myself, I know what's on my heart, but I'm not telling you what's on my heart. <laughs> and she just put me right at ease because she just said, that's fine. God knows what's on your heart. And as they started to pray over me, they were speaking these things in my heart that I only had shared with God. And I knew, I knew in that moment there was yeah. something powerful going on in the supernatural with the Holy Spirit. And I, I too, I was, I started bawling and crying and it was just so overwhelming. And, and I did have healing and I continued to go to those uh, healing services. And uh, it really brought me out of a lot of, a lot of things that had been broken and disappointments in my life. Yeah. I, th- I think the prophetic um, words are what really captured my attention when people would say things over me at, at, when I was being prayed over that no one could have known except for God himself, because like the first time I was prayed over prophetically, um, they talked about purity and purity was definitely an area of, that I prayed for all the time. And I was just like, there's no way anyone would have known except mm-hmm. for God. And, and you that's know, what I was and this mm-hmm. is in scripture. If you look in the old Testament of, um, uh, Saul, he was, uh, Samuel was, was the prophet and prayed over him and said, someday you'll be, you'll be a leader. And he was like this. He's like, how can I be? I come from the lowest tribe, the smallest tribe. <laughs> but he, that was, you know, that was a secret there, that, a, a holy secret. I want to say it that way. It's not like a clandestine, but a holy secret in his heart. And um, a lot of times when we talk about prophecy and praying with people, it's, it's you walk away. The goal is to walk away feeling loved and known. So in that, in that, in that, that in itself starts changing, changing your life. Well, we're up against a little break here, but um, I'm talking with Emily Schmidt. We're talking about the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. This is Catholic Women Now broadcasting from Iowa Catholic Radio Network Studio. Welcome Scotty McCreary with special guest Ali Colleen. Give myself five. Sunday, July 24th at the Iowa Event Center Ballroom. I'm in between Friday night wild and quiet Sunday morning. Tickets and information available at celebratecountry.org. 
sponsored by Ball Team. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Knights of Columbus, Borman, and Pfeiffer agencies serving the Catholic families in Iowa. Knights of Columbus is a fraternal benefit society providing financial security to members and their families, specializing in life insurance, long term care insurance, disability income insurance, retirement annuities. And you can reach Knights of Columbus field agent Dan Ginther at 563-689-6801. That's 563-689-6801. Thank you and God bless. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Catholic Women Now provided in part by Permar Security, providing security solutions for homes and businesses since 1953. Permar Security is a Catholic-owned family business supplying security systems, access control systems, video surveillance, fire alarm systems, and video doorbells. All alarm systems are monitored out of their monitoring center located in the state of Iowa. Permar Security, 515-244-5660, permarsecurity.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. Established in Des Moines in 1924, St. Vincent de Paul assists those living in poverty to become self-sufficient by helping to remove roadblocks on their journey out of poverty. St. Vincent de Paul helps with food, clothing, and shelter, while also offering classes in financial literacy, high school completion, career readiness, and prisoner reentry. Shop, donate, volunteer, serve. The Society of St. Vincent de Paul, svdpdsm.org. Welcome back. This is Catholic Woman Now, and I'm Julie Nelson, and I'm speaking with Emily Schmidt today. We're talking about Immerse Ministry here in Des Moines and a, a lot about the Holy Spirit and just what effect that's had in our lives and just the power that has and can have in your life as well, too. So one of the things we do at our events is we do praise and worship, and I... I just was introduced to the power of praise and worship recently. I mean, I've done praise and worship in the past, but didn't realize that, for one, it's in the catechism. People, it's in the (laughs) catechism. Like, whoa. And a lot of times... In the Bible. (laughs) Well, yeah. And the catechism validates the Bible. But I just want to read this little bit from Catechism 2639 about praise. You know, praise is a form of prayer which recognizes most immediately that God is God. He lauds God for his own sake and gives him glory quite beyond what he does, but simply because he is. So when we praise and worship, we are just coming to him. We're not petitioning him. We're not, we're just thanking him and honoring him for who he is. He does not need our praise and worship because he's God, but he's created us as his creatures to praise him. That's so beautiful. I think praise is often gets neglected, especially when we don't feel like praising, Yes, but often like the time when we need to praise God, when we're in those moments of maybe desolation or melancholy or sorrow, we can praise God. And sometimes it's as simple as like right now today, I'm praising God for air conditioning. Thank you, God. (laughs) You know what I do and I I started doing is I'll put on praise and worship music and I'll play it in the house throughout the day, even when I'm there or not, because it does feel, when I come back from somewhere running errands and I walk in and that's been playing, there is a shift in the atmosphere. I can feel God's glory present. And why wouldn't we want our homes to be that way, right? Our environments to be that way, to praise Him. And I think that's what the early church was. They praised and worshiped right after um, the resurrection and they started meeting. They, They used the Psalms. They they. They sang the yeah. psalms just like David had intended, and they praised. There's a lot of psalms of praise as well. Yes. My favorite one is Psalm um, 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Um, and there's a great song that we sing at many churches, 10,000 Reasons, Bless the Lord, O my soul, which is taken from that. And I just, I love that song because it the verses go through all walks of life, like, we praise God in our daily life. We praise God throughout the entirety of our life. We praise God even at the end of our life and just how beautiful God is in all moments of every night, every, all moments of our life. Well, today's response, responsorial psalm from the, from the mass readings is forever I will sing the goodness mm-hmm. of the Lord. So right there, I just, it, now it, I have to tell you, since I've been doing praise and worship, the mass has come alive for me. Like this psalm reading, it's like, yes, I praise you, Lord, and my heart goes <laughs> up to you. Instead of like, oh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. It, it, it really um, has, has brought a newness to my life and a refreshing. Yes. Well, the mass is our sacrifice of praise. And mm-hmm. you and I have talked about that. 
you know, it's our time to lay down um, all of the things, all of, all of the bad things too. Like it's time to just lay down everything at the feet of Jesus and offer it up to him in praise because without, um, like you said, praise is letting God be God. And we have to just empty ourselves out onto the altar um, so that God can truly, uh, truly enter our hearts. If we don't like let go of a lot of the things that we're holding on to, God can't take control of our hearts. I was just praying with God Monday, actually. I had a really profound experience with a, with some praise and worship music, some new stuff that I was listening to. And I just heard God say like one of it, one of it was, um, here's take my heart basically is the song. It was just a repetitive phrase over and over again. And I heard God say to me, Emily, I can't give your heart to others if you don't give it to me. Oh, that's, because so- that, you know, that's been my praise is like, I want to give my heart away, God, to others and how you call me to. And he's like, well, you have to give it to me then so that I can give it away to you. And that's what we do in our sacrifice. That's great. That's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. Well, we're wrapping up here with talking about Immerse. And I just want to give you some information about Immerse. We're meeting next Thursday, May 19th at 630 at Holy Trinity in Des Moines. You can learn more about Immerse on our Facebook page and follow us at Immerse DSM. And if you want to reach out to us via email, it's Immerse DSM at gmail.com. So we hope to see you there. Let's close we close in prayer here. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear good and gracious God, we just ask that you pour forth your Holy Spirit into us. And those listening today who want this or yearning for this or just feeling a rise in their soul, seeking this, Lord, just make yourself known through the power of the Holy Spirit, your love, your encountering them in a personal way. And we ask this in your name, Lord Jesus, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Iowa Catholic Radio welcomes Scotty Mercury with special guest Allie Colleen at the Iowa Event Center Ballroom on Sunday, July 24th. You can get more information at CelebrateCountry.org. This is Catholic Women Now broadcasting from the Iowa Catholic Radio Network studio. We are gladly taking your donations. We're here for you, the listener, and we welcome them at iowacatholicradio.com. Faith on Trial with Deacon Mike Mano and Gina Knowles up next. And remember... God loves you and has an amazing plan for your life. Today's Catholic Women on the Voice for Catholic Women Now, Iowa Catholic Radio. To a